on this very platform with myself, Lady Berlin, on the Lady Berlin Show, finding strength in your story. And so with your permission, I'd like to say a little prayer. And so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, we honor you, and we say we are grateful and gracious to sit under your feet to be taught, to sit at your table, to dine with you, whatever food it is that you have prepared for us. We are ready to have a feast because we know that this food will nourish our spirit and cause our spirit to grow well and grow right in the name of Jesus. Father, I commit myself into your hands. I ask that your Holy Spirit will take absolute control. Overshadow me with yourself, Holy Spirit of God. Fill me up and pour me out to be a blessing in the lives of your people, whoever, wherever they are, that must hear the word of the Lord this evening. I ask that your angels will locate them and draw them in, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we are grateful for this evening in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So last week, I came on here to speak on a message, breath, and... God, by the goodness of his Holy Spirit, taught us the power that we have in our words, taught us what breath is, helped us to be able to understand this breath that we have, to know that it's life that we have, not just any life, but the life of the Zoe, the life of God. That is the life that you and I have and what we can do with that. Because oftentimes when you don't understand the meaning of something or when you don't know the value of something, you're more likely to abuse it or to misuse it. And I believe last week's message was quite important for us to understand the power that lies in our tongue for us to understand that every moment that we open our mouth to speak, what comes out of our mouth as words are actually life. And it's a matter of what kind of life you have released. Are you releasing a life that will be worth living with? Or a life that eventually you're going to regret. Which is what a lot of us find ourselves doing because of the way we have been programmed. The way certain things have not been taught to us. And so it's so much easy for us to open our mouth and speak negativity. It's so much easier for us to open our mouth and speak death into situations that we're supposed to speak life into. We find ourselves in circumstances. We find ourselves surrounded by events that are dying. Events that, you know, looks like death. And when we are supposed to be speaking life into these situations, we find ourselves speaking death. Imagine... You are out and about and you find someone has maybe perhaps collapsed on the floor. And then you rush to their aid. Rather than helping them to come alive, you're helping to kill them. You're helping to end their life for them. It does not make sense. But this is what you and I constantly find ourselves doing. Because of our unawareness of the power of God that is in us. The Bible says in Genesis, creation, that when God formed man, man was just dust, lifeless. 
what brought man into existence, what brought man into becoming a living being was the fact that God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life. And last week, I shared with us what the meaning of breath is. Ruach. That breath means life. Breath means spirit. So when God breathed into man, what God was doing, God was breathing a part of himself. God was releasing a part of himself into us. No wonder the Bible also says that in Genesis, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. In our image and in our likeness. And so there is a part of God that is in us. That is what makes us gods. And guess what? This very thing, this very life, this very spirit, this very part of God that he gave us, that he breathed into us, Guess what? He didn't just breathe into us and that was it. He breathed into us and then enabled us to be able to replicate the same process. So that when you and I are faced with a death situation, by the power of our breath, whether it's in the form of words, spoken words, life must be released out of us into the situation that is dead or that is looking almost dead and bring it back into life. And so, the Bible makes us to understand I believe it would be in Luke, which is the story of Lazarus. That when they called on Jesus, because the one that he loves, the Bible describes Lazarus. That means Lazarus was someone that probably had a very good relationship with Jesus. For them to say the one that you love was very sick and almost dying. That Jesus stayed exactly where he was for a few more days. Before eventually he decided to leave with his disciples and go to where Lazarus was. By the time Jesus had gotten there, Lazarus had been dead, not just that day. He had been dead a couple of days that they had actually buried him. Now Jesus said to them, where have they buried him? They should take him there. And when he got there, with the disciples and everything, he prayed and then he said, Jesus spoke the word, Lazarus, come forth. And Bible says, no, initially, Jesus told them to roll away the stone that they had used to cover up the tomb that Lazarus was in. Jesus told them to roll away that stone. And then, Bible says, Jesus spoke. Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, Lazarus, that had been dead for days. Suddenly, this man comes out of the tomb. Walks out of the tomb with being wrapped up. How did he even see? Since he was wrapped up from head to toe, how was he able to see enough to be able to know this was the entrance of the tomb to come out of there to wherever he is? How was he able to even see when he's been all wrapped up? But here's the case. It was by Jesus' spoken word that Lazarus came alive. So that means that the words that came out of Jesus' mouth, they were not just mere words, but they were life. Those words spoke life. Those words were life that came out in order for it to be able to have that much effect and impact 
on a dead situation, on a dead person, and bring them alive. Words. Last week I shared with us that the Bible says that words are spirit and life. So every time you and I are speaking, we are releasing those words that are coming out of, of our mouth. Those words are life and they are spirit. Now, there is also another Bible passage or story, which was a little girl. The Bible says that this little girl had died. So the parents came to Jesus. Jesus went up with them to their house. When they got there, they, you know, they had a whole crowd of people. They are crying and mourning. Why? Because the little girl had died. So Jesus made them lead him to where the girl's body, dead body was. And when Jesus found her corpse, her lifeless body, again, guess what Jesus did? The Bible says that Jesus spoke, Talita, come. As in, little girl, wake up or rise up. And this dead girl came back alive by the spoken word, life was exchanged. Life was given to a dead situation. By a spoken word, a dead situation came alive. What words are we releasing out of our mouth? Do you and I really understand this power that God has given us? Do we? Do you and I really understand this power that God has given us? That we spend so much time abusing it. That we spend so much time misusing it. That we spend so much time Creating harm with it, creating death with it. And yet, we have the power to give life. We carry Zoe, life. We carry it because God has given it to us. It's the part of God that he released into us. To bring us, to transform us from the place of dust, lifeless dust, into a living being. I was not looking to come and do a part two of this. But I think the Holy Spirit wants this message to be reiterated so that we get it. Because I believe that if we are able to really grasp it, get it. And run with it in this new year 2024. Oh boy. We are going to give birth. To life all around us. We are going to resurrect so many. Dead situations around us. We are going to live in an atmosphere of life. If you and I really get it and so last week we looked at Ezekiel when God adds Ezekiel if those dry bones could live. And I believe that God was doing this with Ezekiel because Ezekiel didn't know 
Yes, he's a prophet. Yes, he prophesies. But I believe that he wasn't so much aware. He, did, he had not received the revelation of this gift of God that he had as prophecy. So God comes and says, Son of man. So this is Ezekiel chapter 37. And I'm reading from verse 3. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? What a rhetorical question. Who asks such questions? Can these bones live? Bones live? Can bones live without a human body? <laughs> oh, sometimes God can be so funny. <laughs> he will ask you a question that makes you, you know, you start to scratch your head. He will ask you a question that will make you think like, am I going crazy or something? <laughs> How do you come up to someone and ask them, can these dry bones live? Are we missing something here? The dry bones live? Not the flesh. The dry bones live. Is life in the bone? That's a question. That's just me asking a question. But can these dry bones live? Then Ezekiel re responded to God and said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. I don't know. I've never seen dry bones living <laughs> without, the, without flesh. Just bones, I've never seen it in my life. So I have no idea. It's neither here or there. I don't know. He didn't lie. He probably truly didn't know. Just like you and I probably never knew. Dry bones can live without flesh. <laughs> Verse 4. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you. And you will come to life. I will make breath come into you. How would this breath come into the dry bones? When God said to Ezekiel to say to the dry bones that I will make breath come into you. How was that going to happen? Was God going to give Ezekiel, maybe I don't know, you know like how we, we use gas to cook and that. Was God going to give Ezekiel, you know, a cylinder of, a cylinder of breath? To pour into what was what was God trying to say there, or what 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 does the Holy Spirit mean by this? I will make breath enter you. And so when you jump to verse seven, it says, "So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound." And the bones came together, bone to bone. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back to five. God said that I will make breath come, breath enter you, and you will come alive. And then verse seven, Ezekiel is saying that as he was prophesying, there was noise and a rattling sound, and then the bones came together. Ezekiel was prophesying. God had said that he will let breath enter them. 
Then God is telling Ezekiel to prophesy. So as Ezekiel is prophesying, these bones are coming alive. What is it about the prophecy, the spoken word and breath? So the breath could not enter these bones until Ezekiel spoke the words prophesied. And so breath or words are backed by breath. So the reason why the Bible says that words are spirit and words are life is because words are backed by breath and breath is life. The reason why you and I are able to speak, decree certain things. The reason why a man of God is able to stand and make decree and tell this sickness, be healed, and then healing takes place. Tell this um, crippled person, get up and walk. And this person is able to get up is because those words that are coming out, those words are life, breath. As Ezekiel was prophesying, he was releasing the breath of God to enter into the dry bones. Suddenly, these dry bones, Ezekiel said, I began to hear noise, rattling, then bone to bone. The bones started coming together. Kuruma Kayandi. Do you understand this power that we have? Do we understand this power that God has given us? Do we understand The ability to speak, the ability to utter words. Do we understand what it is? Yes. Then when you jump to verse 9, the Bible says, so that's Ezekiel 37 verse 9. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Wait, I don't, wait, wait. This is getting more exciting. Wait, so verse 5, Ezekiel 37 verse 5. God is saying, I will make breath enter you and you come to life. Then verse 7, Ezekiel begins to prophesy and these bones come alive. Then in verse 9, he says, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy to the breath. Wait. 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 I want you to reason with me. Help us, Holy Spirit, to get this. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds and breathe into these slain, and they may live. Prophesy to the breath. So, this then makes me to understand. Help me. If you get it, let me know. If you have a question, let's reason. Let's, let's trust the Holy Spirit to help us to get this. He says, prophesy to the breath. So, that means even though breath, ruach, is life, Without words, mm. without words, so because without Ezekiel prophesying, speaking words, the 
the breath, which is life, could not exist. Does that make sense? Without Ezekiel speaking by prophecy, without Ezekiel uttering words, breath couldn't come alive. So no wonder when God said in 5 that I will make breath enter you, God then went ahead to tell Ezekiel to begin to prophesy. Because as Ezekiel is prophesying, guess what is happening? By the spoken word, as his words are coming forth, breath is released. As you and I are speaking, breath is being released. And what is breath? Breath is life. So as you and I are speaking, what we are releasing out of our mouth as, as words is actually life. And so that also makes me to understand that without a spoken word, life cannot exist. Lady Belin, what do you mean? Go to Genesis. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How did God create the heaven and the earth? The Bible says, Genesis 1 from verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. But life had not existed. Now read on from verse 3. It says, and God said. So in order for creation to happen, in order for existence to happen, God had to speak. So until God said, there was nothing. Without words, without spoken words, existence cannot take place. Without spoken words, life cannot be released. Without spoken words, there is no existence of breath. Because in order for breath to be able to take place, in order for breath to be able to function, in order for life to be able to exist, there must be a release of a word. Guess what? What is a word? When you go to now, thank you, Holy Spirit. When you go to the book of John chapter 1, the Bible makes us to understand word, what the word is. Okay, bear with me. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, right? Very popular passage. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word, and we understand by this passage that that word is Jesus. So every time we are speaking the word, we are releasing, we are activating Jesus. And the word, the Bible says, and the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. As in the word became life. The word came into existence and dwelt among us. And so until, until God spoke, there was no existence. There was no creation. And until Ezekiel began to prophesy, speak, breath could not come, could not appear. Without his prophecy, his spoken word, breath could not enter those dry bones to cause them to come alive. Words. And to think that we use words haphazardly, anyhow, anyhow, and we wonder why our lives are in the conditions that we are facing and experiencing. We wonder why We are going through the very things that we are going through. And we wonder why our continent is in the state that it's in. We wonder why, even though we are believers, we pray and all of that. We wonder why our life does not replicate.
the goodness of God. That we are so surrounded by dead things. Because we have not understood the power of our words. We have not understood that our words are life and our words carries breath and breath is what allows existence to come into being. Let's go back to Ezekiel. I'm loving this Bible, this scripture. Ezekiel 37. Let's see what the Holy Spirit, where else the Holy Spirit wants to open us up to. So verse 10, Ezekiel 37 verse 10, the Bible says, So I prophesied, and as, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet. So I prophesied as I, as he commanded me and breath entered. So without Ezekiel speaking, breath, which is with God. Because verse 7, verse 5 makes us to understand. God says, I will make breath enter them. So it's God that will make breath enter them. So the breath wasn't going to enter them as a result of Ezekiel. Or breath wasn't going to enter them through Ezekiel. God said that I will make breath enter them. But in order before God can make breath enter these dry bones, he needed a person. He needed Ezekiel. He needed a man to first of all speak, release a word. And by the release of the word, then breath enters the situation. I don't know what you're facing. The reason why that mountain is not moving is because you're not speaking the word. The word, which is Jesus, as John makes us to understand. You're not speaking the word to the situation. And that's why it's standing there. Jesus said to the disciples, after he had spoken to the fig tree for not bearing fruit, and then day, and the day later when they got there and they saw that the fig tree had died, and they're like, Jesus Yesterday, it was there. What happened? You just, it's like, when you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, you will speak to this mountain and tell the mountain to move. And it does not have the choice. Why? Because the word has been released. And as long as whenever the word is released, guess what else is released? Guess what else is activated? Breath. Guess what is breath? Life. And so once you speak, you activate breath and you release life. And therefore, it does not have a choice. It must take heed and do the needful. Why are you and I struggling? Why are you and I pestering God when all that we need him to do, he has given it to us for us to be able to do it for ourselves? You're faced with joblessness. You're praying to God, petitioning him to give you, bless you with a job. Hear me. Hear the word of the Lord. That job is going to come by the release of your word. Because until you prophesy, you release the word, the breath 
from God cannot be activated to give life to your word. What are you facing? Financial difficulty? What are you facing? Childlessness? What are you facing? Dryness? Unproductivity? Is your body fighting any terminal, any ailment? Hear the word of the Lord. In order for God to be able to move in the situation, there must be a prophecy that is released because it's by the release of the prophecy, it's by the release of a word that God will cause breath to enter the situation and give life. So literally, I can see with what God was doing with Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 37. God was introducing Ezekiel to the realm of creation like he did in Genesis with, you know, Genesis chapter 1. God was bringing Ezekiel into that same experience that, or that same, you know, the, the, what he it, it did in Genesis chapter 1. We're creating everything. God was introducing Ezekiel to that experience. In Genesis chapter 1. And then God said, let there be light. And there was. Then you go to the next one. Then God said, do you not see that literally before anything in Genesis, before anything came into, before anything was, whether it was light, whether it was day or night, whether it was, you know, plants, Whatever it, whether it was animals, whatever it is, before it could exist, what preceded that was God said. God said. Without God saying, there couldn't be any action. So it's nice. That we go to God and you're crying. It's nice. What does it mean? What are those tears supposed to mean? Yes, you go to God. Yes. He's a loving father. The Bible says that we have a high priest. Who feels our infirmities. Yes, God can see what you're going through. Yes, he understands. Yes, the pain you're going through. The chaos that you're surrounded by. He, he sees how things are not working. But the reason why it doesn't look like you can see the hand of God in the situation. Making things work. Is because he's waiting on you to release that way. Because his power can only work. When there's a release of the word. Release of the word. And as long as the word is released. The Bible says that God watches over his word to perform. That no word will return to him void, having not accomplished what is being sent out to do. Now, that means that when the word comes out of our mouth, that word must establish, must accomplish and establish whatever is being sent out to do. It, had, it cannot return without accomplishing something. So, 
whilst you're busy speaking, whilst you're, be you're angry ranting, you better be careful what it is that is coming out of your mouth whilst you're angry, whilst you're raging. You better be conscious and be careful what is coming out of your mouth because those words, they are spirit. Once they come out of your mouth, it will be backed by breath and it will give life. It will be backed by breath and it will give life. What do you want to give life to? Are you speaking words that are worth God backing it with his breath? Are you speaking words that are worth living? What are you speaking? What words are you releasing out of your mouth? Mm. I, I pray by the Holy Spirit that you and I will really get this way. And not only to get it, but to, to begin to apply it. Because knowledge can only be power when there's application. And in order for us to be able to understand, we must apply wisdom. Wisdom is as a result of knowledge that has been applied to bring understanding. That's what creates wisdom. I pray that we would, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will help us to really get this word of breath. To get it. Help us to get it. Help us to remember this word throughout the course of this year. And as we get it, help us to be able to know how to apply it for it to work for us. How to apply it for the plans and the purpose that God has for us for 2024 to begin to come alive. Words. Words are spirit. And words are life. Before there can be existence, before anything can exist, any idea, whatever it is, it starts off as a word. Then it's spoken. Once it's spoken, it's released into the atmosphere. Once it's spoken, it's released to creation. Then breath. Then God. The power of God is activated to help bring that word. To help mold that word into flesh. That's into a living. Into something that is tangible. So if we didn't hear anything today. If we didn't understand anything from this message. I want you to understand this very thing. That our words carries power that without our words our spoken words breath is not activated to give life to the words and so in 2024 we have the key to make this year a success if you and I will be intentional with everything from today that we speak out of our mouth, let our words be seasoned 
let your words be words that are worth living. Don't just speak. But I pray that this evening, this word has ministered to you and I. I pray that this evening we will grab we will grab this word we will wrap it around us like clothing and that we'll begin to run with it throughout this year and as you and I do that I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that whatever God has planned for us that we will see every one of them come to pass in our life. God said to Ezekiel, prophesy this evening. God is saying through the vessel called Lady Berlin, prophesy whatever you're facing. Prophesy. Why must you prophesy? What do you mean Lady Berlin? Prophesy. I don't know what it means to prophesy. That means speak. Speak. Whatever you're, spe- you're facing, speak. Release a word. What, well, any word? Release the word of God. A few months ago, God, the Holy Spirit taught us a message. The word, your weapon. Go to the Bible, the word of God. What does the word of God say concerning the situation at hand? Concerning the issue that you're facing. Then, prophesy that word. And when God is waiting on you to release that prophecy, that word out of your mouth, because as the moment you release that word, it will activate the breath of God to release the life of that word to bring it into existence. And the dictionary says the meaning of the word prophecy is to foretell, predict. So that means prophecy is future tense. So, whatever you're facing, when God says prophesy, God is not saying look at the situation and tell him what the situation is. It's like Jesus went to the the pool of Bethesda and found the man that had been crippled by there. And he asked the man, what do you want? The Bible says the man began to narrate stories of past, you know. You, every time, every time, and then they come to put me here, they help me and bring me down here. And then anytime I'm trying to get into the pool, then, you know, somebody else will beat me to it. Anytime the angel of the Lord comes to stir up the pool and I'm trying to get in there to get my healing, then someone, Jesus was not interested in any of this because that is not prophecy. Prophecy is a foretelling. It's future tense. Speak what you want to happen. Don't tell me what has happened because what has happened has already lived. Speak what you want to happen because what you want to happen is not alive yet. It's by your word that I'm going to activate breath to enter and bring that which has not existed yet into existence. Speak, prophesy. So, whatever is facing you, the key is to prophesy, to predict, to speak, to foretell future. What it is you want to see. What it is you want to happen. What it is you want to not what you what, not what has happened, what you want to happen, not what has happened. We's not prophecy. We are not talking about past tense. We are talking about future tense. What you want to happen, what you want to pull 
into or bring into existence, God says, speak that forth. And when you release that word, my power, which is breath, will back it and give life. Bring that to pass. Bring that into existence. Whew. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I want to thank you. Jesus, thank you. It's because of you that we can even sit at the feet of God. It's because of your sacrifice that we have access to this deity, this God. Thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for your word that has come forth. Help us to be able to digest it, to be able to understand it, and to be able to apply it in every area of our life so that this year, 2024, we will see a manifold difference in our productivity, in our results, in the name of Jesus. Because this time around, by your word, we understand that we must speak forth what it is we want to see and what it is we want to understand. And as we do that, you will give life to our words. You will back our words with breath and give life to our words. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will help us tame our mouth, our lips, so that any time that we open our mouth to release a word, to speak, that we will speak life and not death. We will speak the things that are worth happening, the things that are worth coming to life, the things that would improve our life, the things that will move us from our current state into an even better state, the things that will move us from glory to glory, the things that will help us to come to become and to materialize the promises of God concerning our lives. I thank you, Father, and I honor you. We are grateful this evening for your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless each and every single one of you for taking the time to join me right here on this very platform. The Lady Valencia with myself. Lady Berlin, finding strength in your story. If today's message has blessed you in any way, don't just keep it to yourself. I encourage you to share it. Bless someone with it. I pray that you have a blessed week. I pray I release the word of God ahead of you that whatever your hand finds to do, let it be a blessing in the name of Jesus. I pray and I decree that your word in this season will be seasoned and it will give life to greatness, to fruitfulness, to abundance, to prosperity, to all things good in the name of Jesus. That a week from today, when we recalibrate, that you have a testimony to share that God has indeed been good to you. I thank you and I bless you. I'm grateful for your time. Have a great evening. And we'll see ourselves next week, Thursday. Same time, 8 p.m. UK time. God bless you. I love you. <laughs> good night and bye.